Hello, everybody. So today we are in the, or in this video, not today, because <laughs> um, whenever you're watching us, we are talking about rationalizing. Rationalizing. So rationalizing just means turning a fraction from a gross-looking thing, something like this. Whatever. It doesn't even matter what's on top. But um, this would be counted as ugly by mathematicians because it has a square root on the bottom. Anytime you have a square root on the bottom. Mathematicians call that an ugly sort of number. So we're just trying to do makeovers today where um, those two people from What Not to Wear, the lady with the white stripe in her hair and stuff. So anyway, um, we're trying to turn ugly rationals into beautiful fra rationals, which would be like 5 over 2 or square root of 6 over 8, whatever. As long as there isn't a root on the bottom, a square root, on the bottom, we're okay. So that's what we're trying to do here. So first of all, I just want to run through again some really fast um, properties of square roots. We talked about these in the last video about solving with square roots. And we're just going to quickly um, just kind of go over these properties because we're going to use them again today in this video. So uh, properties of square roots, we can break up square roots. Oops. Okay. We can break up square roots. Um, square root of 49 times the square root of 2, for example, we can break 49 up into those, and then 7 square root of 2. That's a much nicer looking thing because it's not as big of a number inside the root. We want our roots as small as possible and not underneath fractions. So here we combine them by multiplying, and then we break it up into a perfect square and a not perfect square. So that would be our final answer. So again, we're focusing on getting what's underneath the roots as small as possible. That's our that's our big goal here. So that's that's another kind of how do we know we have a nice looking root? It's because it's as small as possible and it's on the numerator, not the bot the not the denominator of the bottom of a fraction. So um, so same deal here. And with with a division we can break that up too so we can write it like this. And then that's just 6 over 7. Same with this one. We can break it up. And then the top just stays the same. And the bottom has a 5 on the bottom. This is counted as a nice looking fraction because it has a number on the bottom, not a square root. That's our big important deal here is no square roots on the bottom. Just like, I mean, you know... I don't know if you guys understand, but it's a lot like like fashion rules are kind of weird if you think about the rules of fashion. Um, you know, the rules of square roots are kind of weird too. What mathematicians like to see is just is just a little weird. So, you know, just gotta get used to it. Adjust just like people adjust to what they're wearing. Oftentimes, so um, here's our main here's the, the the meat of the of the situation. You're rationalizing denominators. So this has a this has a square root on the bottom. That's ugly. We want to get rid of it. The way to get rid of it is multiplying by the same thing. So we multiply by the exact same thing. And what happens to the bottom is that the roots actually go away. And it's just the 2. Up on top, you just multiply the two numbers. So you get the square root of 10. That is a much better looking fraction to a mathematician than where we started. This is um, beautiful. This is ugly to a mathematician. That's just the way it is. So we want to make mathematicians happy. So here's our next one. So we break that up. You know, we can go like this, break it up. Just we use that quotient rule. And then we want to multiply by the same thing that's on the bottom. When we do that, we get the square root of 30 over 5. And that's our answer. A little bit ugly. We can bring that up a little bit. There you go. There's our five. Next one. Again, multiply by the same thing as the bottom. So we get the square root of 72. And this oops, 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 oops. And eight on the bottom. Now this is really nice looking, but this number on top is a lot bigger than we'd like. We can, we can simplify this. So we want to break 72 up into 36 times 2 over 8. 
The scrimmage 36 is 6. And then those can reduce to our final answer of this. You might say, wow, that, that takes a lot of work. Um, and it does. But, you know, a lot of people spend a lot of time getting ready in the morning so that they look nice for school. So that's, you know, again, that's another analogy here where, where this is our bed head. And then we're going to ready for school. So we're, we're going from, you know, messed up hair, no makeup, whatever, to looking really nice and stuff like that. So that's just the idea here. Um, so that's one type. That's a, there's a, there, you know, there's an imaginary line here. That's if there's just a regular old square root on the bottom. If there's a square root with a plus, we have to do something different. We have to do something called the conjugate. The conjugate is where you have, oh man, oops. Um, that's where you have a plus b. and a minus b. The nice thing about that, the conjugate is the, the thing that we use to get rid of, um, to get rid of rationals, to get rid of rationals like this, where there's a root and a regular number. We just have to use a different tool, just like if you have, um, if you're gonna take out a, a nail, you wanna use um, the back of a hammer or something, or if you wanna take out a screw, you gotta use a screwdriver, so it's just, just a different tool to, to do a similar type of job. So this says 7 plus square root of 2, so we're going to multiply by 7 minus the square root of 2. And whatever we do to the bottom, we have to do to the top. So the top just distributes. And the bottom, we have to foil first, outer, inner, last. So we have the top and the bottom here. And then we can simplify that. It's really cool. These middle ones just go away. And then we just have 49 minus 2 on the bottom. So our final answer will look like this. There is our answer. So here's our next one. Again, we're going to multiply by the conjugate. The opposite of 4 plus square root of 11 is 4 minus the square root of 11. Whatever we do to the bottom, we have to do to the top. We distribute. And then on the bottom, we FOIL. First, outer, inner, last. We can simplify. These go away. 8 minus 2 square roots of 11 over 5. 16 minus 11 is where you get the 5. That's our final answer. I said a bunch of times in this video, but it's just, it's just rules of mathematics to make nice looking fractions or nice looking roots is just not have any roots on the bottom. So maybe to you this doesn't look any better, but to a mathematician it does. And that's just the that's just the, the way things are working for this. So here's our last one. If you'd like to pause it, try it on your own, feel free. But I'll continue going here. So again we want to do the conjugate. The opposite of this negative is a positive. And whatever we do to the bottom, we have to do to the top. We can distribute. And then on the bottom, we have to FOIL first, outer, sorry, first, outer, inner, last. And then we can simplify. The middles go away. This is why conjugates are awesome. It gets rid of all these roots here. Bye-bye, roots. And then on the top, we have 32 plus 4 square roots of 3. And on the bottom, we have 61. So there you go. That's how you make roots. 
look nicer. That's our main goal here. So there you go. Um, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to um, comment on the video. Otherwise, you can tweet at me at Mr. Bidlin with any problems, and I will try to get back to you as soon as possible. So um, there you go.